She lures her into that <coughs> laundry room to show her the items. And as Michelle says, no thanks, I'm done, and tries to go up the stairs, that's when the attack happens. And it starts out with a small hit, a small slap, until things progress from there. And then it, the next thing is the defendant tries to grab her, pull her into that bathroom there, and she's not able to do that. So she pulls her and takes her all the way across the hall into that back bedroom where the attack ultimately occurs. So let's look at her intent from start to finish. This isn't something that she did hastily, not something that she did impulsively, or that was done recklessly. These are all intentional acts from start to finish, one thought to another. What do I need to do to get this woman's baby? You can see in the basement that the windows are all covered. Nobody can see in. She gets her in that bedroom and she gets her on that bed. She has hit her repeatedly about the face. You remember those pictures of Miss Wilkins from last week where her face is all puffy and bruised. She hits her on the face. She gets her on that bed and she holds a pillow over her face. She moves from that act to strangulation, putting her hands around her neck. That's not working. So she moves from the strangulation to getting the lava lamp and hitting it over her head. She goes back, another act. She moves on to, again, strangulation as she's, after she's done the lava lamp. Now remember, after the lava lamp, the lava lamp breaks and it crashes and it goes into lots of different pieces and there's that wax flowing down. The defendant takes one of those pieces and stabs Michelle Wilkins in the neck with that piece. And then she goes back to the strangulation. And Michelle told you that she's strangling her, but there's blood or that wax, something, and she's not able to get a good grip. And Michelle is flailing her arms, trying to get her off of her, trying to help protect herself, protect her baby. And she's flailing her arms and it's not working. The defendant is on top of her and is just too strong. And so what does the defendant do? She moves from that act to the next, where she gets right on top of Michelle, puts her knees on her arms so she can't feel her arms, and pushes down with all her weight with her hand on her windpipe. And after that is when things go cold and go blank for Michelle. Now we know that all of this was happening on that bed in the corner, because that's where all the blood is. There's the base for the lava lamp. Multiple assaults. This multiple assaults isn't hasty or impulsive. She's doing everything she can to knock out Michelle Wilkins. All of these things that she's trying to do to get it so that Michelle isn't fighting, so that she's either <coughs> dead or passed out so she can get that baby out. And then once she's successful at that, what does she do? She moves on to the abdomen. And even then, those acts of getting the baby out were not hasty or impulsive. You heard from Dr. Nelson about what a pretty good job she did with this cesarean section, that it looked like an intern in medical school. That was the quality. What does she do? She cuts once, twice, three times through Michelle Wilkins' abdomen and then another cut in the uterus to get that baby out. And she pulls that baby out. So think about all of those things that she did, one act to another, that it wasn't hasty or impulsive. She also used multiple weapons. We know she used this knife that was found in the kitchen sink, had Michelle's blood on it, and then she used that knife that was found on the floor that also had Michelle's blood on it. So at some point, she had to think, and she had to go and get two different knives to use in this assault. Now let's look at after the attack. <coughs> Michelle Wilkins is passed out, unconscious. Her baby is gone. Her lower <coughs> intestines are hanging out of her body. Her baby is in the bathroom upstairs. And what does the defendant do after the attack? Well, the timing is important because we know, as Michelle said, that she's there for about an hour, then they go downstairs, and that's when the assault happens. Look at the text between the defendant and David Ridley that day. If this was something that was hasty or impulsive or chaotic or something that just happened, 
that she wasn't intending on planning or doing, her text would look a lot different. Their texts put back and forth, normal, cavalier. How are you doing? What's going on? Are you ready? She sends a text with that picture of the oils. I'm ready. Um, more talk about the oils. Very cavalier, matter-of-fact text messages going back and forth. Because while she's sending these texts and calling him, she's cleaning up from what she just did to Michelle Wilkins. 